Hey folks, uh, so what I want to go over today is how to configure uh, this guy. This is the TP-Link AC750. You can get it on Amazon. You can get the, the, the dual band one or the single band one. I believe they work the same. Uh, I'm doing the dual band one, uh, which will do the 5 gigahertz. I believe this one only does 2.4 gigahertz. Um, but uh, this is a, what they call a travel router. Um, but uh, what I use these for all the time is when I only have um, a wireless connection available but I have a wired device that I need to plug in so like a printer or a terminal on a shop floor uh, where they have wireless but they don't have a wired connection and it's a huge pain to get somebody to pull a cable to where it goes uh, this will allow you in this configuration to plug in a wired device and it will bridge it to the wireless. Um, so the first thing I want to go over is this switch here on the side of this guy has to be all the way in the down in the client position. The, the AP RNG EXT client position all the way down. Um, and then we'll plug this guy in and we'll get started configuring it. And I'll go through some of the little gotchas about this guy um, that are kind of weird, uh, but it does work. And I've had many of these in service for years now and they still continue to work. Uh, so they are great if you've got something like a TV that only has an ethernet connection that doesn't have any Wi-Fi, an older TV or an Xbox or something like that and you want to connect it to your wireless. This is a relatively inexpensive way to do that. Okay, so now I have uh, booted up the router and I have on this little power light here. Um, I have on this power light right here and this Wi-Fi light. They're on steady. It's going to boot up and it's going to come on and then it's going to reboot a couple of times and eventually it's going to come up to this. So when this happens, what we want to do is go and uh, connect to this TP-Link 154C. Your, yours will be named a different number, but it'll say TP-Link at the beginning. And then we're going to hit connect. And it will ask you for the password. This one might not because this is my second time going through setting this up. Uh, but the password is the serial number that's on the back, uh, which is the middle number on the back. And so once that's done and it says it's secure, it'll still say checking network requirements for a while. Usually you can just go ahead and go here to an HTTP forward slash slash TP link wifi.net. And that, that address is also written on the back of the router. And it may not go at first. Uh, let's try it again. There it goes. So you do have to wait for it to actually come up here and say no internet secured and then it will work. You can close this goofy window. This default username and password is going to be admin. Admin. Right. And so now we're going to go to our network and we're going to change this to a static IP and it's going to be one that's on our network. So this is going to be 110.240. It will be its management IP. Oh, I think it's going to be 110.240. And then I am 110.1 for my gateway, my main router. Uh, and so I'll hit save. And now that's going to cause the device to reboot. So we'll give it a minute here. Now it should come back up and automatically reconnect if you had that connect automatically checkbox checked before. If it doesn't, just go in here and hit connect. But see, this one did automatically reconnect. It says no internet secured. And so now it's going to come up here. Or it should come up here. There it goes. Okay. So you just have to give it a minute to and make sure you reconnect to that Wi-Fi and then this site's going to come up and it's going to come up with my new management IP now, which is all good. Let's say admin admin, log in. 
And now I'm going to go ahead and uh, change the operation mode of this, right? And so we're going to change this to client. We're going to hit save. And guess what it's going to do now? It's going to restart again. So we'll go ahead and, and let it restart. So now what we got to do is we actually have to hook up to the Ethernet port of this router. When we change it to client, the management now has to happen off of the Ethernet side, not off of the Wi-Fi side anymore. You'll, you'll come back up and you won't be able to get into that Wi-Fi side to manage it. So I have a little USB to Ethernet adapter that I got on Amazon, or you can use a computer uh, that has an Ethernet adapter. Um, I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. We're going to go ahead and plug it into the Ethernet port. And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to turn off my Wi-Fi. And uh, that way we will connect over this. Um, and so we'll just have to give it a minute to come up and do its identification thing and all that. And then we will be able to get into it. And so now it says TP-Link, no internet. And now it's gonna come up here to the management page, and there we go. So now we can go admin, admin, and go back in. Now, we're just gonna go uh, down here to the five gigahertz. I'm gonna put in my wireless SSID. And then I'm going to scan. And we're going to choose number two, connect to. And if you have a, uh, if you're in an industrial environment that has multiple access points with the same SSID, that's 100% A-OK. -okay. You just choose the, the strongest one or whatever here. It will automatically change and roam between them. So long as you don't hit this lock to AP. If you lock it to the AP, it's locked to the MAC address of this specific AP forever. And it won't it won't change if it moves. So you don't really want to hit that lock to AP button ever. The only time you might want to do that is if you're trying to like bridge between different buildings and you want to bridge to building A and not building B, which is farther away, you could lock it to building A's AP, right? Um and so the security key, I'm going to go ahead and type that in here. I'm going to pause this first because it does not hide it. But I'm going to type it in. I'm going to hit save. When I come back, we'll be at the DHCP screen. Okay, so now I'm at the DHCP screen. And we want to just disable DHCP because we want to get an IP address from our main router. Uh, you could type a static IP address in on the machine. And you can also enable DHCP and just give it a couple of addresses there to hand out on its LAN side. Uh, so here's the thing. Some places that run like fancier equipment, Microsoft servers, and they have uh, bigger networks and uh, Cisco switches and stuff, sometimes it will not pass the DHCP through. I don't know why. Most smaller networks with a single access point, it'll bridge and pass it through and get an IP address just fine. I haven't been able to figure out why that is exactly, but it's the case. Um, so if you're having trouble with that and you need to, to, you can't manually assign an IP address to your device, then you may just need to enable this and give it a single address that you want it to be in here. Give it the default gateway in the DNS server. Right, for now, I'm going to disable this, and we're going to see if it does indeed pass the DHCP through correctly. Um, and so what we're going to do is go here and do an IP config release. IP config slash renew. And we'll see if it gets one from my router. And sure enough, it did. It got 100. If I log into my router,
Give it a minute. <laughs> Using an IP config slash all. And my MAC address on this adapter ends with B13E. Oh, come on. Okay, network uh, LAN DHCP client list. B13E is 100, just my Lenovo Yoga, boom, there it is. I, it hands it in an IP address and it passes that right through the bridge. Sometimes on some networks, especially larger companies, for some reason, it does not do that. That does not work. And your only choice then is to just go ahead and enable the DHCP on the device. So I would come here. And I would just say 110, say that 205, and the ending address is 205 because it's just one device on the back end, so we need one IP address. The default gateway v.1, and this in my case would be dot two, and this would be 8.8.8.8. .8 um, a lot of times on many networks, your your DNS will be the same as your default gateway. I'm running DNS on a Linux server on dot two, so that's why mine's different. But on many small networks, the router uh, passes the DNS through as well. Uh, so it would be dot one there. And then you would enable this and you'd hit save and it would hand this a 205 address directly off of the LAN port. Um, we don't have to worry about that here because it is bridging it, it's passing it through, we're good to go. Um, uh, another gotcha, is uh, if you try to plug this into an ethernet switch and then have your laptop connected to the ethernet switch and try to change the IP address on your laptop to match that temporarily to set it up. If you get the Wi-Fi enabled and it's going and you plug this other side into a switch on the network and that network does not have spanning tree or rapid spanning tree on the switches, you will create a broadcast storm and you will take down the network. This device has no spanning tree or rapid spanning tree built into it. So do not connect it like this. Have it connected to the Wi-Fi and then take that Ethernet and plug it back into your switch. It's going to be a bad day, all right? And it's going to take everything down. Uh, just ask me how I know. Um, so um, that's pretty much it. Uh, you can see here I am connected to the Ethernet. My uh, Wi-Fi is turned off. And I will have internet access here. And I have a 30 megabit internet connection. So let's see how close to that we can get over this wireless bridge. And we're, we're pulling 32. We're pulling nearly 35. So, yeah, that's the maximum speed of my cable mobile. I have the $15 a month plan, so um, that's really good. And it should be like five or six up. So, yeah, yeah, it's getting close enough. So, yeah, this, this runs, it seems to run full speed. I don't have a gigabit internet connection to try it out, but... Um, it's it's plenty fast enough for most devices so hopefully this will help you guys uh, be able to do this uh, there is a firmware update out for these you can download I normally don't because this one works fine um, and you can go down here to system tools and change the password on it to something else because 240 is going to be the management IP for this from now on on the network if you need to get into it and change anything or look at anything. Um, you can connect uh, both the 2.4 and the, and the 5. Right now the 2.4 is not bridged to anything, but you can, you can set both of these up and it will automatically roam to the strongest one. Um, and you can set just one or the other up. I like to use 5 gigahertz when it's available because it's just less interference. As long as I have a good signal on it, it's less interference. Somebody's not going to turn on the microwave oven and kill it, right? Um, 
But that's basically all there is to setting this up as a wireless bridge. Just uh, comment down below if you have any questions or anything. Um, but this should be pretty simple for just about anybody to set up. And if you're a network guy, you'll know what all these different terms I'm using, like DHCP and DNS and all that mean. And this is kind of geared more towards a network guy uh, to know how to do this. But it's really, really nice when you got to set up a, an HP printer that doesn't have wireless on a shop floor or a barcode printer or, or something like that. And you need to get network access to it. Anyway, I'll talk to y'all later. This is Tom, your frugal prepper.